So now we come to the next important detail related to time. And it's simply the question as to what happens if you have two waves interacting with each other. Okay? And mathematically, it's very, very easy to actually work it out. You know, because this is, you see these, these two waves um, written down here. Okay, wave one has a certain amplitude, we just call it A1. Has a certain wavelength, we call it lambda one. Has a certain period, we call it uh, capital T1. Okay? We plug it in, we can simulate how the shape moves around in space over time here's a snapshot on the on the on the upper left okay you can see the shape of the way and for simplicity we just set the amplitude to one okay so you can see that the wave one uh undisturbed is zero and then it goes up by plus one and goes down by minus one okay now we can do this similar thing for wave two has another amplitude we also set this to one the unit is irrelevant okay you can just imagine that it's one meter but it really it doesn't matter okay we also set it to one the amplitude oh we can choose a different wavelength we can choose a different period and then what we call the interference is the sum of wave one plus wave two and I can already show you one example. Okay, it's just a still image. We still have to see the waves in action. It's just at a, at a chosen time. Okay, but I don't know the setting of this one. We look at some movies on the following side. But you can see that there are regions where the waves actually amplify each other. They sit on top of each other, and you get an amplitude exceeding one. Okay, you can see that here's a slight increase above one. This is an area here where you have, we call it a positive interference. Okay? Or a constructive interference. Then we have other regions where actually the, the, the uh, signals cancel out each other. You can see in the wave one plus, three, plus two here, that almost no amplitude. And no, no signature. It's a cancellation. We call it a destructive interference. Okay, one wave wants to move the the surface upward. The other one wants to move it downward, and the result is a cancellation. So, a no wave can be explained by the cancellation of two waves. Okay. And this is, this is important because it happens with the tides. Tides come as individual waves called tidal constituents, and they are superimposed on each other. Each wave here is driven by a flow convergence, uh, flow divergence, flow convergence, horizontal flows. And so they are not really interacting dynamically. It's just you add the individual components it's like a linear thing okay it doesn't change anything of the dynamics it's just adding up two waves leads to a different behavior and i already note now is that the speed that you get of these interference patterns like in this gra graph here we call it a wave group this this pattern here actually this speed of that can be significantly different to the individual uh, speeds of, of, of these uh, um, original waves. Okay, so it's really a difficult task to, a more difficult task to predict the, we call it the group speed. So now let's have a look at some simulation, uh, some examples. You could do this yourself. You could even do it in, 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 in Excel or, or, or similar software. All you need to do is create these waves and the interference pattern and create a little simulation. So we look at different cases. The first one is same wavelengths, slightly different periods. And then we do same periods, but slightly different wavelengths. And then we do some, some other stuff. Let's see what happens. 
same wavelength but slightly different periods have a look at this you get a time when you have a can cancellation and then you have a time when you have a constructive interference you get a time okay and that repeats and repeats and repeats something very similar to this happens with the tides such that you get what we call a spring neap tidal cycle there are times where the tides the two components of the tides sit on top of each other create maximum tidal range at other times you get a cancellation or a partial cancellation of the of the signal called spring tide okay let's have a look at the the next example okay and this is one where you have the same period but slightly different wavelengths okay In situations like this you can actually have um when you have a two waves just coming from different you know just coming slightly modified with the different wavelengths you get this you get these features where you sometimes waves are very high and sometimes waves are very low okay and that's probably if you surf then you experience that quite a lot that you there are these magical numbers in certain areas you have to wait for 11 waves and then the next you have to wait and then you get another good wave magical numbers and that depends on the regional behavior of of of, of uh, waves okay another example is this is an actually an, an important one it's called a standing wave it happens if you have this the waves have the same property exactly the same but they move in opposite direction what you get is a wave that only swings up and down okay between these regions which move up and down you have so-called wave nodes and under the wave nodes they don't move vertically at all but you only get horizontal movement under these wave nodes you know have these horizontal and both ends goes up and down okay and this happens if you get a reflection so if your wave bounces against an obstacle and comes back it's the same wave but opposite directions you get standing wave also if you have a closed basin and you move it you get these standing wave patterns called seiches okay natural oscillations in closed bodies and again we will come back to that to that feature as well so just for completeness a few more this is one is just you can play around with it you get some really interesting changing patterns or so and and if i show you tidal uh, signals uh, tidal interference patterns you actually will will see some similar similar patterns there too do i have more i have one more look at that interference pattern you have this wave group traveling very fast okay and so on before I get too blurry I have to finish off this part and let's see what we talk about next